trimethylxanthine. Oh, hi there. I'm Alan Guinea. I'm a second year resident in emergency medicine at NYU Bellevue. I'm here today with Dr. Salil Bandari and Rob Rosenwald to teach you how to use a magnet to alter the function of an implanted pacemaker or cardiac defibrillator. Pacemakers and ICDs have grown increasingly complicated over the years, and our cardiology colleagues can use a wireless computer to interrogate these devices, change various settings, and glean all kinds of telemetry data. That kind of intervention is probably beyond most emergency practitioners, but there are times when we need to be able to alter the function of these devices at the bedside before our consultants arrive. Luckily, modern pacemakers and ICDs all contain something called a reed switch. That's an electrical switch that can be triggered from off to on in the presence of a simple magnet. If you place a magnet over the housing of an implanted pacemaker, it will change the function of that device and cause it to pace the heart at a fixed rate, a rate usually between 70 and 100 beats per minute. The actual number will depend on the device manufacturer. Conversely, if you place that magnet over the housing of an ICD, it will disable the anti-tachycardia function of the ICD. In a sense, as long as the magnet is over the housing of the ICD, the patient will not be shocked. Here we have a patient with a dual chamber pacemaker who presented with palpitations. We can see on the monitor that the patient is tachycardic to 130 beats per minute. As you can see, this patient is tachycardic and this rhythm is paced. Here's his EKG. I can see that the patient is being paced at a tachycardic rhythm, and I suspect that he may have a pacemaker-mediated tachycardia, a type of re-entrant tachycardia where the two different leads of a dual-chamber pacemaker become part of an infinite loop of excitation. I can often find my magnet attached to the side of a metal code cart like this. I've identified the body of the pacemaker and by simply placing the magnet over the pulse generator I flip the reed switch. This switches the pacer to a fixed rate at about 80 beats per minute. As soon as I remove the magnet from the pulse generator the pacer switches back to its previously programmed settings. You can see here that it's no longer pacing at a fixed rate, but I've aborted the tachycardia because I briefly shut off the malfunctioning sensing functions of the pacer. Sometimes it may not be clear cut whether your patient has a pacemaker mediated or other type of tachycardia, but there's really not much danger in trying the magnet on top of it because as soon as you remove the magnet, the read switch will return to the off position and the pacemaker will revert to its program settings. Here we have a completely different patient. He has an ICD and he presents it to the ER after being shocked. While here in the department, he's been continually shocked and it's very painful. When I look at the monitor, I can see that the patient is actually in a flutter. He has a narrow QRS, and so I'm confident that those shocks are inappropriate. I could wait for my cardiology colleague to arrive with his interrogation device to change the settings. But in the meantime, if I place the magnet over the body of the ICD, I'll flip the read switch. That disables the anti-tachycardia function and the patient will no longer be shocked. If at any time I remove the magnet, the read switch will flip back to on and the ICD will go back to its previous settings. Oh, sorry about that. So remember, if you need to change the function of an implanted pacemaker or ICD at the bedside, you can do it by placing a magnet over the read switch located in the body of the pacemaker. 
If you place a magnet over the reed switch of an implanted pacemaker, it will change the function and cause the pacemaker to pace the heart at a fixed rate. If you do the same to an ICD, it will not affect the pacing, but will disable the antitachycardia function, and the patient will not be shocked. Thanks for stopping by.